Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, what a glorious, glorious, glorious day to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you would, go ahead and go ahead and get your Bibles out. And if you would, please turn with me to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, we're going to be starting with verse... I was going to start with 20, but I'm going to go ahead and start with verse 19 because it's starting. It's the start of the new subject in the first chapter here. And in this first book of Deuteronomy, uh, it's laying you out the timetable of where God's children had wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. Now, we all know why that they wandered through the wilderness, right? It's the blatant disregard to God's covenant and God's commandment. Amen. It's a it's a funny thing. Well, no, it's not funny. It's a serious thing. But it, it, it's just awe-inspiring this morning that Sister Amelia in her Sunday school class, which we've done this last couple of times, and, it, and it's got to be God's will. Because last couple of times I've preached, what she's taught on, on Sunday school has touched on some of the things that the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart. And I just want to give God praise for that right now because that is so unbelievably amazing. But it was talking about the new covenant and the old covenant and how God's children in the house of Israel had disregarded the commandments of the Father and that covenant. And, and we all know that's why the uh, Israelites there wandered in the wilderness. Now, what is the wilderness? It's a land of unknown, uncertainty. Now, why were they in the land of uncertainty? They failed that covenant God had made with them. The commandments that God gave them, they went against that. They fell into idolatry. So they were cursed to wonder. But the thing I love about God, during that wondering, what did He do? He took care of those children. Amen. He fed them. He kept them. But, you know, as the Israelites did back then, they backslid many times, over and over. They seen the goodness of God of bringing them out of the hands of Pharaoh and Egypt and part the Red Sea. Could you imagine seeing something like that, brothers and sisters? I can't imagine. And then they go right back to their old ways. Now, us, as a nation... We're kind of being like the Israelites there, are we not? Yeah. We've seen the truth. We know the truth. But yet, we set up our idols every day. Every day we set up our idols. Whether it be money. Whether it be sports figures. Whether it be uh, music artists, movie stars. We set up our idols every day. And we continue to backslide. So that's what's got this America in the wilderness that we're in. This is a land of uncertainty. A strange land. And that's what a wilderness is. But let's go ahead and start Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 19. And we were when we were departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness which he saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites. As the Lord our God commanded us we came to Kardesh Barnea. And Moses speaking and said, I said unto you, ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give us. And you see here, God's made a promise to His children that, he's going, that they're going to inherit this land. The Father's going to give it to them. You know, that's a great blessing. You've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and God says, Go take this land, the land that is given to you. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. What a blessing that would have been in my eyes. Let's carry on here. Verse 20. And I said unto you, ye are come, or verse 21, excuse me. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it. And the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee. Now, take your highlighters, take your pens, underline this next statement. Fear not. Fear not. Neither be discouraged. 
I want y'all to highlight that. I want y'all to burn that into your mind and in your hearts. The Lord God told them to fear not and be not discouraged. Because the Father already knew what they was fixing to come up against and we're going to find out here shortly as we carry on reading. The Father knew what they was fixing to come up against. And the Father knew that He had them in His hands. But yet we're going to see the Israelites there and they completely disregarded that. Completely disregarded that. Verse 22. And he came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search out, search us out the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, into what cities we shall come. And the same <coughs> pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain and came under the valley of Eschol and searched it out. And they took of the fruits of the lands in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Now does that really surprise you there? The Lord gives you a land. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Because we all know every good and perfect gift comes from the Father, does it not? Yes. There, there can't be no gift that comes from the Father to be corruptible. Mm -hmm. And the greatest gift we got, we all know, is the eternal life and salvation and forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. But here you see the Lord sent them to a good land, brought back fruits from it. And I, I mean, in my eyes, I'm looking at fruit trees everywhere. You know, plenty of game to go hunt and eat. You know, the Lord bless them. Amen. Like He's wanting to do us today. And to us that love Him, guess what? I know He's blessing us. Amen. I've seen Him with my own eyes. Amen. It doesn't mean we ain't having troubles, because I know we all are. Amen. We all are struggling. Amen. And we're all going to struggle, but that's okay. We have faith. And we have the knowledge of God's words and God's promises. And His promises are to you that you will be taken care of. If you love Him and you strive to serve Him and you accept Jesus Christ in your life and heart, He will be there for you. He will never forsake you, brothers and sisters. Amen. And all these great things the Israelites seen, but yet they don't want to, they don't want to adhere to God's Word. Amen. Yeah, that's a shame. See it going on now, don't you? Here, here, here in this country now. You see it going on every day. They don't want to hear to the true Word of God. Mm -hmm. Alright, verse 25, or verse 26. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled, rebelled against the commandments of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tent, and said, Because the Lord hath hated us, He hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Excuse me? <clears throat> These people murmured and said that they brought them out of, out of tribulation and you know imprisonment by the Egyptians to bring them to the Amorites to be destroyed. God will never do that to His people. That truly love Him, God will not do that to His people. But yet they murmur. Verse 20, 28. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Now I want to stop you right there. Do y'all know what the sons of Anakims are? They were a warrior type of giants. Giants. Some of them over 13 meters tall. That's over 50 foot tall. The people that went out before saw that. That's what I was talking about earlier. We're going to figure out that God knew what they were up against. Could you imagine that going out into battle 
And seeing a man that's 50 foot tall, I mean, we got men that is like 7'7", seven, 7'8", seven, seven, eight, seven, nine, even 8 foot tall now. That's nothing compared to what these guys were. Some of them over 50 foot tall. I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but some scholars say they were even up over 100 foot tall. I don't know if that's true or not. It don't say that in the Word of God, but I do know it says, it says in the Word of God he's over 50 foot tall. A huge man. Huge man. And they were warrior types, it says. So, in our humanly flesh minds, you say, well, I see why we were scared and didn't want to go up. But you failed to mention God sent you up there. Because you know what? My God is bigger. Amen. My God is better. I promise you that. You best believe that, Jack. My God is bigger. We must put our faith in God when He sends us to go do something to go do it. Not be like the children of Israel here and murmur amongst yourself and be scared and tuck your tails like a wolf pup. Because guess what? We have evidence of when God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Not one. Not one. All right, let's carry on here reading here. Uh, verse 29, Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. Underline that. Don't be afraid of them, he said. The Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. According to all that He did for you in Egypt before your eyes. They failed to recollect that, did they not? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, stop and think about it right now. We're talking about the giants there, the Anakims. It's talking about a natural person there. But I want to interest you in some thought here. Stop and think about it. What's that giant standing in your way today, brothers and sisters? Is there a giant standing in your way in any way, form, and fashion? I know there is mine. But I'm continuing to put my faith in God. Because I see what the Israelites did here. I know God loves me. I know God loves you. Brothers and sisters, that giant that's in your way right now is nothing too big for God. It's nothing too big for Jesus Christ. It's nothing too big for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Face that giant, brother and sister. Don't run from it. Don't back down. Because when you do that, you're completely disregarding a commandment from God the Father that says, fear not. That's a direct commandment. Fear not. Moses here again says in that last verse we just said, we just read, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God was going before you. Amen. He still goes before you today. Amen. Tomorrow. Yesterday. He's the same yesterday as today. And He'll be the same tomorrow. Hallelujah. He wants to be there for you. But He cannot be there for you when you are doubting Him. Right. Brother Jimmy's word of the year is faith. Where's your faith at, brothers and sisters? Get that giant out of your way. Don't let it stand there and block your blessing. Like the Israelites did here. It let them block your blessings. The land was good. They seen it. But yet, they also seen the sons of Anakin. And it scared them. Like faith in God's Word and God's commandments. Carrying on. Verse, <clears throat> verse 31 here. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Satan, you ain't taking my voice, son. I can't help you. <clears throat> and in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bear thee and as a man doth bear his son in all the ways that you went until you came into this place. Yet in this thing you did not believe in the Lord your God. They didn't believe Him. 
Woo! How can you be so ignorant? I'll tell you how you can be so ignorant. When you're stuck in the ways of the flesh. We must deny the flesh. Because the, the, the flesh is corruptible. But the things of God is incorruptible. That's what happened to the Israelites here. They adhered to the things of the flesh instead of looking for the future and the spiritual ways of God the Father. Verse 32. I mean verse 33. Who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in and fire by night to show you by what way you should go and in a cloud by day. And the Lord, and the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. Now this land that we walk on today, like the song that Brother Joey so graciously sung, is God's country. This is God's country. Amen. We're right smack dab in the middle of God's country. And that was God's country too that was given to the Israelites for the inheritance. But yet, they seem to be seem fit to murmur about it. To be afraid about it. Brothers and sisters, that giant that's standing in front of you today, be not afraid. Face it head on. Because God commanded you to do that very thing. When you go by His commandments, we know that He is with you and for you. And like Moses said here earlier in this chapter, He will fight that battle for you. He will rip back that curtain and show you the chariots of fire that He has on your side. Because our God is what? He's an all-consuming fire. All-consuming fire. What does that mean? It consumes all. Everything in its path, it will consume it up. And that includes that giant, that mountain of a giant that's standing in front of you. Amen. But the Lord was wroth when he heard these murmurings. He can hear your murmurings today even though you don't say a word. If you're thinking it in your mind, he can hear that. And it makes him very unhappy. But one good thing I want to point out to you, Jesus Christ knew that we was going to have this problem. He knew the flesh was corruptible. And that's one of the reasons why Christ come to this earth to die on that cross to make that new covenant. He didn't do away with the old covenant. It's still there. We still have to adhere to the guidelines God gave the children back then. We need not do away with it. The only thing He done away with is the blood statute there for the forgiveness of sins. He's made one sacrifice for all. We no longer have to sacrifice for our shortcomings. Boy, there wouldn't be an animal left on the face of this earth if we still had to do that. Because we fall short daily. Daily. On the daily we fall short. We too are like the Israelites here. We've been given a land, but we've backslid from God's commandments. And, and that's why the enemy is starting to take over our land. We, as Christians, need to do like God's people does. They don't give up land. They take land. We need to take this land back. Mm -hmm. We need to stand up on the true foundation, on the chief cornerstone, the stone not cut by hand, by man, but the chief cornerstone. And who is that? That's Jesus Christ. We need to get back on the way. I'm not saying that we're not doing that here at Old Union Community Church, because I know we are. Because we stand on the true Word of God. Mm -hmm. Not man's Word of God, but the true Word of God. And the true Word of God says we take land. It's high time that we stand up and stand on that promise and take this land back over. 
and it may be too late, and that's okay, because I know that's consummation in the end times. Amen. God said it was coming. He told us throughout the whole Bible, it's coming. But he says here, surely not one of these men of this evil generation shall see that good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. But that's okay. That's okay. We can repent. We can repent. We can turn the tide. We can turn the tide. But if we can't turn the tide for real, guess what? We can share the light of Christ. Amen. We can share the gospel of Christ. That way we may bring, may bring more to His family. Because we are His family. We love God. We love Christ. We love the Holy Spirit. We love all three as one. And continuing here in Deuteronomy, verse 36, Say, Caleb, the son of Jephani, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath holy, underline that, holy, follow the Lord. And the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou shalt also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which is, <clears throat> which is in that day, had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. See here? He's got to go back to the wilderness. And if we fall short and we don't turn our ways back to God, guess what? We'll be sent into the everlasting wilderness. That is everlasting death. Now, for closing, I want to go to Psalms chapter 46. Psalms chapter 46. And it makes me so happy to know that this passage is one of my daughter's favorites and it's also one of my favorites as well, too. Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Through the waters thereof, thereof roar, and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. There is a river. Who is that river? It's Jesus Christ. Did you hear what that said though? There is a river. The stream whereof that shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease. Did you hear that brothers? He maketh wars to cease. Unto the end of the earth he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. 
He burneth the chariot in the fire. Verse 10. Highlight this, brothers and sisters. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Brothers and sisters, today that giant can disappear in front of you. Read this, Psalm 46. Read that whole chapter. When you're afraid, apply it to your heart, apply it to your mind, apply it to your life. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Seek Him early and He shall find Him. Amen. Look, up, look upon Him, brothers and sisters. Hold to Him. Go to Him. In all your times of trials, temptations, troubles, whether it be financial, spiritual, mental, physical, whatever that need is, hold to Him and He will guide you through it. Amen. He brings you to it. He'll bring you through it. Amen. He will carry you. He will never forsake you. Brothers and sisters, you're here giving your time to Him. He wants to give your time, His time to you. He is our refuge. He will not lead you into temptation, but deliver you from all evil that's coming. Amen. It's here today, but it's coming even more to the likes of things that you will never see in your life. Give it to God. You can't do it. That song we sang early enough, we're not strong enough. He is strong enough. Amen. He is strong enough. And when you're not feeling strong enough, remember Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Through Christ is the only way. Amen. Without Him, we are cast into the outer darkness, damnable to the eternal death. But we have, we have a way. What did Christ say? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brothers and sisters, first and foremost, have you accepted Him today? If you have not, brothers and sisters, it's high time. You feel that Spirit on you. I feel it in this building strong today. If that Spirit is on you today telling you to come into that relationship don't be like the Israelites were don't deny that he's here for you so would you all please bow your heads God is saying to you today today is the day of salvation if you've not accepted my son Jesus Christ it's high time you do that because he is the only true way that you'll be able to to navigate this life the only true way that you will be able to remove that giant in front of you. The only true way that that mountain will crumble at your feet is Jesus. If you have not accepted Him, this altar is open to you today. Don't let this moment go by without accepting Christ into your heart and accepting His sacrifice and confessing His holy name. And start your life anew, a new beginning.